Roll call, please. Slattery. Slattery absent. Clinker. Here. Clinker here. Johnson. Here. Johnson here. Alexander. Here. Alexander here. Bellato. Here. Bellato here. Cosidus. Here. Cosidus here. Rita. Rita absent. Donahue. Donahue absent. Holly. Holly absent. Farenwald. Here. Farenwald here. Hill. Here. Hill here, Mac. Mac absent. Carr. Here. Carr here. Cantello Zoman. Cantello Zoman absent. Eight present, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And myself, I'll. Yeah, myself. number nine. All right. Uh, next is the presentation of general proceedings. I need a motion to approve the City Council minutes for the date of December the 10th, 2019. I have a motion by Alderman Carr, second by Alderman Farrenwall. Any questions? Roll call, please. Clinker. Aye. Clinker, aye. Johnson. Aye. Johnson, aye. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Cosidus. Aye. Cosidus, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Eight ayes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, public comment. Hi, my name is Howard Kapari, Community Development Manager. I'm here to uh, present to everyone at the City Council the new building official that was recently hired. He actually started yesterday morning. So I'm here to present Mr. Sandino and he'll speak a couple of words on his behalf. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, good afternoon. panel. Uh, my name is Ahmed Aish Sandino. I'll be your new uh, building official. Uh, my office is open to any of your questions or anything, any comments that you have. I'll be willing to answer as soon as possible. Uh, well, I started uh, yesterday, so I'm uh, eager to and willing to work with you, every one of you, and try to do the best for the city of uh, Blue Island. So uh, you're welcome anytime at the office, and I'll be emailing everybody uh, the information so we can be in contact with either email or uh, text at any time. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. Anyone else? <coughs> Carol Pace Green. Blue Island taxpayers are not treated fairly, and all of these dishonest activities and bleeding must stop. Make no mistake, 2019 was a terrible year for Blue Island taxpayers as a re direct result of Blue Island elected, elected officials' missteps. Our Blue Island elected officials have made many wrong turns from the Tahoes to the $15,000 earmarked for a conflict of interest Sergio Acosta investigation. That money would be better spent paying for the Caterpillar. Numerous poor financial decisions, pilfered wasting millions of dollars, opted out of mi minimum wage, increasing water rates above Blue Island's minimum wage, uh, hourly rate. During the last four decades, we Blue Island taxpayers have witnessed the slow, systematic draining of Blue Island's city treasury, as evidenced by growing debt. 30 million and climbing, interfund borrowing from different funds, tax anticipation warrants, sales for bonds for Jawa to pay debts and lawsuits. The last set of lawsuits, millions. Blue Island has always needed a balanced budget and a line item audit, not appropriations. Blue Island needs a treasury, treasury reports written by the treasurer, written by Treasurer Bellato, city collector reports, finance reports, complete finance committee reports, along with checks and balances. <coughs> Abuse of power, hiring an additional legislative council and law firm for the Restore Blue Island political party at Blue Island taxpayer expense. Again, Fred, I want to compliment you for foregoing your alderman pay. Hopefully that helps offset the 
uh, payments that are going to Montana and Welsh. I'm not thoroughly convinced that they should be receiving any payments yet because that uh, conflict of interest complaint has not been ruled on. So we don't have a ruling yet. Putting the, you know, putting themselves above Blue Island taxpayers and further draining the Blue Island's treasury. No other community has elected officials that have engaged in such egregious conduct in the history of the state of Illinois. I can't find another community that has a legislative council. If you guys know of one, please let me know so I can stop saying it because I don't want to uh, say this if it's inaccurate. But I can't find another municipality in the state of Illinois. Maybe uh, State Representative Kelly Burke, maybe you know of one. You don't. Okay, good. Uh, properties have been gobbled up at bargain basement prices using slick tactics coming as close to without crossing the line as possible by the connected. The Longwood Project, the Chatham Street Bridge, the $10 million low interest loan for smart meters provide evidence Blue Island will benefit from a dedicated engineer. Borrowing $10 million for smart meters and paying it back over 20 years makes about as much sense as buying a car and putting the payments out for 20 years. It's highly unlikely that car will definitely be running 20 years later. The latest Bob Rita led back backed backroom deal cheated Blue Island out of millions for ambulance and ALS training services Then does not benefit Blue Island, period. We should have gotten $2 million out of quorum for ambulances and ALS training services for our fire department, and we didn't. While there's always hope, Third Horizon has many, the Third Horizon deal has many moving parts, several puzzle pieces that are simply altogether missing. These are uh, four hospitals that are looking to maybe reconstruct something over there at Metro South. Three out of those four hospitals are failing hospitals. Is the state going to allow three failing hospitals to take over a failed hospital? Would any one of you go in with two other failed entities to, uh, on any project? The legislation for a freestanding ERs was not sent or signed by the governor at the end of the fall session. Omitted in its entirety from the legislation were patient protections from surprise bills and price gouging. Medicare, Medicaid patients can't use that. The Blue Island Planning Commission, Blue Island Zoning Commission will be unable to approve planning or special use zoning for the facility due to the missing legislation and the Blue Island Building Department will need to see substantial property improvements for that poorly maintained facility. There's been an all out concerted effort to drain Blue Island of all assets and it has negatively impacted Blue Island taxpayers daily lives. The 2020 new year will bring in the census, a Blue Island remap, with the endless possibility of census tampering to gain home rule. Among several things Blue Island taxpayers want to see are city treasury reports written by Treasurer Bellato, city collector reports, finance reports, checks and balances that have been missing for more than a decade. And more than ever, we need real elected officials who are truly on the side of protecting Blue Island taxpayers and ready to put an end to all of this crazy because at the end of the day, it's the taxpayers that are paying for all of this. And it really needs to stop. So I'm looking forward to 2020 providing better vision, 2020 vision for everybody so you can really take a good look at what's going on. Robinson Engineering, half a million dollars a year. Blue Island should be in tip top shape. We're not. A dedicated engineer would cost us $100,000 for the year. A, a lot more thought needs to be put into the decisions and the decision making process that's going on here within the city council. Not all of these I, I, I's and doing the same old thing over and over again. Like with the um, 
first aid kits that have cost how much would you guess? Uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I okay. Any idea how much they, they're costing for a year? Because uh, certainly, as you pointed out, uh, Alderman Alexander, you can buy those in Walmart and refill them yourself. And it will be, it's absolutely uh, OSHA standard and would, would pass OSHA uh, requirements. We've got to stop just blank check letting everything just run through. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Enjoy the holidays. Please put on your thinking hats. Think about what you want to see, how you want to save money. Do not use appropriation and budget interchangeably. They're two completely different things. Please, please, please you spend our money as frugally as you spend your own. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Alan Stevo. Uh, probably eight years ago, there was a citywide survey taken by the Center for Neighborhood Technology. Do you remember that? Yes. And uh, recently, uh, the chair Alderman Bilal on his committee said that there was a 10% vacancy rate in the uh, Central Business District. That could be, I, I haven't checked. But in this survey, overwhelmingly the people asked for stores like Whole Foods, like Peace Market, you know, things like that, substantial stores where they could shop on a daily or weekly basis. I was going to ask you, who's responsible for posting the council minutes on the website? City Clerk. City Clerk. They haven't been posted on the website since June 11th of 2019. Just a uh, matter of fact, and I know the residents, they would like to see them posted. We'll make well, sure they're we'll make sure possible. They're Thank you. Uh, City Attorney Burke, uh, I just been asked before about uh, the obstruction of justice in the police department, how it cost the citizens over $2 million. Have you done anything to bring uh, justice to this uh, uh, former former uh, deputy police chief who aided in the obstruction of justice and cost the taxpayers this money? Well, I'm asking you to do something about it. Write some letters to uh, Illinois Attorney General, State's Attorney, get the ball moving. Because we have to, we have to put that behind us, and we want a police department, you know, that we can really count on. And I do stand for the first responders, the good ones. Uh, does any alderman have any questions of me? Any anybody? Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, Happy thank New Year. Thank you to you and your family. Thank you very much. Anyone else? If not, I'll move on to uh, the mayor's business announcements. Again, uh, Alderman Johnson, uh, I don't know if you were here the last time. If not, I'll, I'll remind you of this or I'll let you know. I have no objection to what you've been asking for a forensic audit. Uh, we're looking out for proposals and we'll bring it up before the whole council and see what the council wants to do once we get the proposals on for a forensic audit. And I think the suggestion had been to start with the water fund. That's one announcement. I'm requesting a hearing next month regarding the status of Alderman uh, Alicia Slattery, uh, specifically her residency, and I'll keep you informed, the council informed of that. Uh, third, uh, I'm informing the council, I'm in the process of uh, formation of what's called a mayor's advisory board made of uh, residents of Blue Island. And lastly, I want to wish everyone a, a Merry Christmas. On behalf of my family, uh, the City Hall family, and the residents of Blue Island, what really touched me, in whether you're familiar with this or not, similar to what uh, the comedian Jerry Lewis used to have and still does after his passing in September on Labor Day weekend, in Mexico during this holiday season and every Christmas for the last 20 years, is called a teleton, telethon, to raise money for uh, children who have incapacities, physical, primarily physical. And what really touched me regarding seeing that, there was a one, 10-year-old little girl, Mexican little girl, who had deformities that you wouldn't believe. But 
and I repeat this, she was the most joyous little girl alive. Even though she had the physical deformities, her heart was in the right place. And that's where I think we miss it in life, all of us, including myself, that we don't know what we have and we let it go like it's, it's nothing. When you see someone like that and all the children, not only in Mexico, but all across the world, especially during this holiday season, let's think about that, how blessed we are and our family, our children, are, and really think about it, because that's what really is the Christmas spirit, humanity, etc. City clerk, any business? I do have a couple things to say this evening. First, and it's, there's, a, there's a phenomenon called the illusory truth effect. It's also known as the validity effect, the truth effect, or the reiteration effect. And according to Wikipedia, it's the tendency to believe false information to be correct after repeated exposure. Every board packet, there's a cash collections receipt that every alderman gets, every person that gets a board packet. Every single day in the clerk's office, there's deposits made with receipts made by the Blue Island policemen. And here are the reports that every day are available for the finance department, the senior accountant or the finance director that's available for them. And I really take personal offense to comments from the public. And when, when that's the right for the people to come up here and speak, but when elected officials start to believe it, that's the illusory truth effect and it's, it's got to stop. There's, there's plenty of documentation, plenty of procedures in place that show that cash collections are accurate. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other business? Any bids? No bids. City Treasurer. City Treasurer is not here. Uh, I think this, uh, you all should have a copy of what's called fan, uh, fund transfers, the date 12 17 2019 to corporate. It has unrestricted, restricted. And I think there was copies that the public has that. Uh, first line of is approval of interfund transfers from unrestricted to restricted accounts. I need a motion for that. Do I have a motion by Alderman McClinker? Do I have a second by Alderman Tom Hawley? Any questions? Roll call. Clinker. Aye. Clinker. Aye. Johnson. No. Johnson. No. Alexander. Aye. Alexander. Aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato. Aye. Casitas. Aye. Casitas. Aye. Rita. Aye. Rita. Aye. Hawley. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald, aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill, aye. Hill, aye. Carr, aye. Carr, aye. Ten eyes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, Nexus. I didn't agree to that. Doesn't I'm sorry. Nine and one. I'm sorry. I did write that down as a no. I'm, I apologize. Next is the cash collection receipts report. And uh, again, no treasurer's announcement. City attorney? Anything? None. Uh, committee reports, committee development? There's no report for community development meeting. I gave my report at the last meeting. Um, under finance committee, we have a motion to approve accounts payable for the amount, and it's a corrected amount. There was a mistake in the original. It was a double billing for the health insurance. And um, out of this $647,167.46, a loan between the health insurance and Lakeshore is over 300,000 of that, is those two big bills. So we need a motion to approve accounts payable check proof for December 18, 2019 for $647,167.46. We have a motion. We have a second by Alderman Kill. Any <coughs> questions? Go ahead, Alderman. I just want to state for the record that I will vote in favor of the uh, payables tonight, uh, although I do oppose the retention of Montana and Welch. I don't think it's necessary, but I know we have a legal obligation to pay it, so I will approve it. All right. Anybody else? If not, roll call, please. Clinker. Aye. Clinker. Aye. Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Casitas. Aye. Casitas, aye. Rita. No, because um, I do not believe that uh, we've been provided with the um, uh, expenses versus the um, revenue, and it has not been provided for quite a long time, so for that reason I'm voting no. And I also would like to add that um, the reason why we have to have the Montana and Welch is um, do other communities, um, have they had a mayor that um, purchased uh, Tahoe's? We didn't purchase so, any Tahoe's, so let's get the facts straight all the time. Well, we're in the middle of it. 
just stayed here. So Rita, no. Holly? Aye. Holly, aye. Farenwald? Aye. Farenwald, aye. Hill? Aye. Hill, aye. Carr? Aye. Carr, aye. Eight ayes and two noes. Thank you very much. All right, next I have a motion to approve payroll for December 13, 2019 for $350,861.61. Motion to have a second by Alderman Hill. Any questions? Roll call, please. Clinker. Aye. Clinker, aye. Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Aye. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Uh, no, for the same reasons. Rita, no. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Mech. Or excuse me, Carr. Aye. All right, ordinance number 2019-059, an ordinance leveling, level, levying taxes for the city of Blue Island for the current fiscal year commencing January 1st, 2019 and ending December 31st, 2019. We need a motion. Get a motion. We have a second. By Alderman Carr. Any questions? Roll call, please. Clinker. Aye. Clinker. Aye. Johnson. No. Johnson. No. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Aye. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Alderman Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Nine eyes and one million. Thank you very much. We have a number four here, abatement of $396,606.25 of real estate taxes levied pursuant to ordinance 06-046, and I believe this is from 2006. So it's um, abatement of real estate taxes uh, to pull them from the levy for next year. Am I correct, clerk? That's correct. Yeah. Got a motion, can I have a second? Second Milam and Hill, any questions? Roll, roll call, please. Clinker. Aye. Clinker, aye. Johnson. No. Johnson, no. Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Cosidus. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Holly. Uh, oh, this is from 2000. I'm sorry. It's a 2006, and it's a, because of the bond, the way it was issued, it, it cannot be Step levied on the taxes, so we have to abate them. Okay, we've got nothing about this. Uh, if we do this every year from now. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Nine eyes and one no. Thank you very much. Number five, resolution 2019-044, resolution authorizing a contingent fee for professional services agreement with as of our audit solutions for the city of Blue Island and um, clerk, do you know more information? It's about the water meters audit, right? It, it's about, I'm not 100% certain on this one, but it's about um, uh, where they come in and they audit what taxes we collect and we're supposed to yeah. collect. They, so they look I know we approved it a while back in finance. I'm just getting Correct. a refresher. It's been several months, and, and we pay a percentage of what they save us. It's no cost. They pay yeah. a percentage of what, and I don't know that number off the I just wanted to clarify because I'm sure other people had the same that's, answer that's question. So yeah. We need a motion for that. A motion. Do we have a second? Alderman Hill, any questions? Alderman, go ahead. I have a question. I did just a little bit of research into this company, and apparently the city of Freeport quit using them in 2018 because they started charging, uh, they charged a 2.5% uh, fee, and then they, let me, wait, I wrote it down. They started charging a 2.5% credit card fee for payments made with credit cards and a 15 cent per transaction fee. Yes, I see that. Are we, are we going to be subject to that? I mean, that's why free. You know what? I think the out. gentleman from the company. I just seen that too. Yeah. Thank you. We might need all a refresher here because it's been a while since we've been a while. Got it. That's why I'm here. Um, my name is Tom Fagan. I'm from Mass of Our Government Solutions. I'm the one that sold Freeport. And there is a video out there. So within as of ours um, arsenal, we've developed local gov, um, which is different than the audits. So we were um, implementing a system where we would do tax and fee administration. So when I presented it to the council, 
I said there was no fees for the audit. So there are no fees for the audit. It's a contingency-based model. Um, we look and make sure that all the utilities like Comcast, NICOR, ComEd are giving you all the money that should be um, allotted to you. There's a lot of miscodings that happen. That's the audit, that's contingency. If we find nothing, it costs nothing. The local gov part is the tax and fee administration that when somebody um, does a, a tax um, for food and beverage or whatever you want to think of, a vehicle sticker, and they submit to pay it, there is a administrative fee or a merchant fee, a credit card fee of 2.5%. In that case, when you do a, a, a um, when you do a transaction that has nothing to do with the audits you're not doing local gov it is just the audits we've done it for over 250 um, municipalities in Illinois ever since 2005 and have found over 100 million dollars of miscodings um, a neighboring uh, suburb I and I have all of you and I'm from Oak Forest all my life and actually lived in Blue Island in the early 90s um, we found um, revenue, AT&T revenue in a neighboring um, community of $42,000 when um, AT&T miscoded what the village or what the city was paying for that service. So we do payables as well as receivables. Um, we found another neighboring, if you think down Harlem Avenue, um, I won't say the community, five addresses being um, calculated to Chicago and not than the neighboring municipality um, in IDOR's records, one of which being a Dunkin' Donuts. So we were able to give that municipality back money that was going to Chicago. So the Freeport thing, yes, it was, it was a misunderstanding and we tried to negotiate with them. We also said to them we would get rid of the merchant fees and they didn't do that. Um, we renegotiated with them because they didn't understand what I meant by fees for this as opposed to the audit. The audit, there are no fees okay. at all. Questions? Okay. So we're just using you for an audit? For the audits. Okay. Right. Joliet is one of our local Gov customers. If you want to go online and see what we do with them, Joliet is one of our main allies in local Gov, yeah. Tax and Fee Administration. There's a motion, there's a second. If there are any other questions? Okay. Go ahead. So there are no fees for the audit itself? No. But if you do find there are some miscoded we would like to split with you 55% for the municipality, 45% for Azabar. And when you think of that, when they miscode a, a utility address for residential, you're thinking 2 to $3 per month. We're also able to go backwards three to four years for back taxes. Like with ComEd, we're going for back taxes right now. Um, so it's just to share what we find for a 36 month term in each stream of revenue that we're looking into. So it's putting money back in to the coffers as these people would like, but not costing you anything. You know, you could do it and it would be nothing. You also could not do it, it'd be nothing, but 55% of that revenue for 36 months and then 100% of the revenue after that is money in your coffers. Any other questions? Broke off with Clinker. Aye. Clinker. Aye. Johnson. No. Johnson. No. Alexander. Aye. Alexander. Aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato. Aye. Cosidus. Aye. Cosidus. Aye. Rita. Uh, no. Rita. No. Holly. Aye. Holly. Aye. Farenwald. Aye. Farenwald. Aye. Hill. Aye. Hill. Aye. Carr. Aye. Car, uh, eight eyes and two nose here. Thank you very much. Finally, of resolution 2019-045, authorizing execution of agreement with Metropolitan Industries Incorporated for the monitoring services of Thornton Elevated Tank, the Highland Pump Station, the Vincennes Pump Station, and Meter Vaults. This is the one I was thinking of. Yeah. So this also went through Finance Committee um, a few months back, and it's basically um, monitoring the if, if a pump goes down to the cloud and, and notify Jim right away if there's an issue over like on a Christmas day if a pump goes down. It's, it costs like yeah, 45 bucks. Yeah, it's, it's hardly anything. It's something we have to renew. It's just a contract we have to renew. Is there a motion? Second by Alderman Farewell. Any questions? Roll call, please. Clinker. Aye. Clinker. Aye. Johnson. No. Johnson, no. 
Alexander. Aye. Alexander, aye. Bilotto. Aye. Bilotto, aye. Cosidus. Aye. Cosidus, aye. Rita. Aye. Rita, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Nine ayes and one no, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Anything else, Alderman? That's it, aye. Thank you. Uh, Public Health and Safety Committee? Yeah, Public Health and Safety, we met earlier tonight. Um, I'll have those minutes next meeting. Um, the only one item of interest, actually, that I'd like to get out there is Alderman Farrenwald's leading up this task force about speeding in the residential neighborhoods, and he's looking to do like a town hall meeting sometime in January. So he's going to check with uh, the city clerk and the attorney to see what we need to, get, need to get that set up because we believe it's more than just that street that has the same issue, so that way we can get the word out, hopefully get some people in with some ideas. Our next meeting is set for January 21st, 2020, back there. Or out here, actually, now, I'm sorry. Could I make a reminder, this was brought up months ago, right after the 4th of July, the fireworks. Fireworks? Yeah, so we're going to try to address that. Yeah. All righty. That's been an issue that's been growing and growing to basically almost out of control. All right, yeah, that's a good time to start. Yeah. You know, in the beginning got, of the year, so we'll, we'll talk to the police chief and see what we and fire chief so we can get going. All right, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Um, I got a question, uh, Mr. Cl uh, yes, Alderman Clinker. Is it possible that we can have more than just one uh, town hall meeting in certain areas, like maybe down at the Blue Island Recreation Center? Because like when some of those kids is getting picked up from school district 143 and a half, which I visu visually see myself, uh, them speeding and things of that nature as well. Yeah, I, I have no problem. Like I said, sure. Bill and Will and Jim Polstrel and Sergeant Seppes here are the ones that are kind of heading the whole thing up. So Bill's looking at getting ideas going, so I, I don't see any yeah, problem with doing a couple of them. Talked about it for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Municipal Services Committee? No report, Your Honor. Our next meeting is January the 14th at 6 o'clock. Thank you very much. Judiciary Committee? Uh, we were supposed to have a meeting tonight. It was canceled for uh, due to uh, lack of agenda items. So our next, so of course there will not be any minutes. And um, our next meeting is January 21st, uh, 2020, 7 p.m. Thank you very much. East Annex. Any automatic announcements or comments? Uh, yes, I'd uh, like to say thank you to all my the Blue Island. Um, supporters and donators, um, all my friends and families, and to everyone here at City Hall and um, the uh, various departments for the City of Blue Island. Um, I had a very uh, angel's touch. Um, it was kind of low-key this year. There wasn't a lot um, that was said, and um, but I got a call last minute uh, to do a serial drive, as I do every year. Took over from when my mom did it. And um, as uh, Alderman Clinker reminds me, which I appreciate. Um, so it was really, it was a very successful um, uh, drive this year. And I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart, everyone who donated. And um, so do the uh, Angels Touch people and, of course, the recipients of the um, gifts. So thank you very much. And uh, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, all. Thank you. Alderman Johnson? Yes, um, <coughs> Chief. Um, my thing is I've been asking for this audit pretty much since I've been an alderman, almost 11 years. Is it possible that we can get like maybe a time, time date type of thing on it and that we can keep everybody in the loop about We're it? We're trying to shoot before the end of the year, uh, not the end of the year, at least by January, the first two or three weeks of January, we'll have something on the table for you guys to vote on. Okay, um, and the other thing is, is have we had anybody uh, or any uh, prospects for the uh, financial director's position? Yes, they've already started the interview process. Uh, another one will, I think, in the next week. Uh, tomorrow, in fact, it is tomorrow. So they're, and then we'll probably get the finance director involved uh, when the final candidates are on the on the block, as they say. Okay, because the thing is, is that. Um, you know, um, we hadn't had a, a report in about six months. I never felt comfortable about really voting for uh, some of our reports, but definitely since we hadn't had a report in six months, um, like I said, I've been fighting for this thing almost 11 years for us to have an audit to find out really if we truly want to know where, you know, how our money coming in and going out, and if there is any, if any, leaks going in where we can patch them up. Um, 
to uh, you know further this city, uh, make the city go forward in a positive manner. I'm not trying to hear any more about what we don't have as far as finances, because we can finance other things. We definitely need to finance this so we can understand our own finances. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Uh, we need, I guess, we're not returning to closed session, correct? So I need, I guess, we'll move on to uh, the approval, release, and settlement of the agreement, the Hyro versus City of Blue Island and all. 14L010312. I need a motion. Motion by Alderman Hill. Second. We're not going into executive session. Did you say we're not or we no. are? No. We're well, not. Um, is there a copy of the letter? Yeah. Uh, probably some people want to see that. You need a second? I need a second. Second? Any questions? Not real. Go ahead. Th there was another issue that we discussed in closed session that's off the table. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Alderman, go ahead. Yes. Um, have we looked into anybody else, the people that's in this lawsuit to help pay for this instead of it all being on the taxpayers? Alderman Johnson, I would like nothing more than that. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think that, to be honest about it, um, it's not something we can pursue because we'd probably spend a lot of money on it and get nowhere to be, unfortunately, I think that's the case. Um, that's why I don't think we also need $15,000 spent on an investigation in the Tahoe matter because it's another waste of money. Um, and it's unfortunate because it's going to cost us $2 million um, the settle of, settlement of the family's lawsuit was under three million dollars, so we're five million bucks out on this thing. Uh, having to, you know, I walked into it three years ago. It's a disaster. I don't know how else you can look at it um, for the city and for the taxpayers, um, and we're stuck with it. I understand. I understand, um, Alderman um, Fanwall, what you're saying, things of that nature, but. Um, how do we stop this from happening in the future? Because I, I didn't see anything put in place for the, to stop this foolishness. You know, I asked for um, us to be going into this year or, well, three years ago for us not to be, you know, self-insured. Mm -hmm. Had some people come through and give, uh, and matter of fact, address it to the finance uh, committee, which they were okay with it, but they couldn't, give us any kind of solid numbers because the director of finance wouldn't give them the uh, information they needed to give us a real sound projection on what this would cost us. So it won't keep costing us so dearly as a city and as well as the uh, constituents of Blue Island. I certainly agree that the fact that we're not insured is a tremendous problem. Um, it, it restricts us from being able to do anything that involves any risk at all, um, and it creates additional risk down the road, and I would love to see us get insured as well. I, I know it's a real challenge, because I think, believe we have such a bad record at this point that it's difficult for us to, to get that kind of insurance. There was a, a shared pool amongst various communities I know we were looking to get involved with. I don't think that went anywhere, but I certainly think that we should continue to look at that because we need to be insured. Well, the thing is, it went in front of finance, and they was okay with it. The thing was, the ball was dropped with uh, Director Marzell. No, I, if I can speak. Um, yeah, Fred. I think we're all in agreement, Alderman Johnson, and I think that's one of the biggest things you should ask, or we should all ask the new finance director, whoever it is going to be hired, he or she, big priority to look into again doing, getting out of a self-insurance or at the very least catastrophic insurance for situations like this. 
and I think it's a good thing we can look into again. I do know I wasn't around um, the last time the council looked into doing this. A few of you were, and I think we did um, have a track record that we wanted to go a certain amount of time without any major lawsuits like this. We were going for a while pretty good, um, comparatively. Uh, even from when I got on here in 2015, 2014 or 2015, our numbers have decreased. This has the, been the big one that's been uh, hanging out there. But when we first got on, uh, at least you guys, I think there was, there was a lot of them out there that have been paid off over the years. So we're in a better yes. position now than we have ever been in, in recent memory. So it's a good time to look into this again, possibly. And now that this is put to bed, and there's nothing on the horizon, God forbid, anything else on the horizon coming, would be a good time to look into this again. I totally agree with you all. I mean, um, Bilotto, but it, like I said, it's things that um, even before I became uh, an alderman, we're stuck, we got hit with, you know what I mean? Um, things even though this is from 2005, when did this happen? Yep. 2006. Yeah. I mean, that's how long we've been dealing with this. So. Yeah, yeah, I think we're all but, the same but it was something that dropped was dropped on us that wasn't actually yeah. you know it was before us. It yes. just happened to become our, uh, our problem. Our problem. <coughs> Any other questions? Roll call. Clinker. Aye. Clinker. Aye. Johnson. No. Johnson. No. Alexander. Aye. Alexander. Aye. Bilotto. Aye. Bilotto. Aye. Cosidus. Aye. Cosidus. Aye. Rita. Aye. Rita. Aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald, aye. Farrenwald, aye. Hill, aye. Hill, aye. Carr, aye. Carr, aye. Nine eyes, I wouldn't know, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Anything else? I have a quick question. Go ahead. So I didn't realize this, uh, our order brought it up earlier, um, that we weren't going to executive session. The collective bargaining negotiations, I know we asked if there's been any more movement on that. Have we done any more with that? We've got a, um, uh, arbitration the 23rd, I believe. Arbitration yeah. over the whole contract? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. th so there's... Not much. There's not much to report, but we'll have one report next week. Okay. So we. Okay. Because I know that we were asked to look into that to let us know mm -hmm. what's up. So okay. That's all. Just yeah. thank you. Need a motion for adjournment. Alex Hill, second Alderman Garwell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.